When we look back fondly on Corey Foreman's career at USC, we can always say at least he had that interception against UCLA. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Holkin, and thank you for making Locked on USC your first listen every day. Whether you're going to watch this show on YouTube or wherever you're going to download your podcast, this show is free, and I always appreciate your support. You can show yours. If you're watching on YouTube, you're going to help me get that goal sooner than later. Hit that subscribe button. When you see the thumbs up, smash it. They both mean a lot to the show, and I want you to click that bell notification so you'll never miss an episode. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers, you're going to get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. Visit fanduel.com forward slash locked on and you can get started today. No matter what happens, USC fans, you're always going to be able to give Corey Foreman one of those two finger victory salutes for that game saving interception two years ago at the Rose Bowl and the Crosstown Showdown against UCLA, preserving the win. That is, unless he decides to transfer to UCLA, or even worse, Notre Dame. I don't know. It finally happened. Corey Foreman, he's he's finally put himself, he's entered his name into the transfer portal. I think everybody anticipated this was going to happen. Um, that day finally arrived. So, is it just me, or does it feel like USC misses out on more five-star talent than any other program. USC brings in a lot of big-time names, big-time talent, but it just seems like they strike out a lot. Remember when USC beat out Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, Oregon, LSU, Oklahoma, and everybody's mother for Corey Foreman's commitment in the 2021 recruiting class? I mean, it can't just be USC who missed out, right? They weren't the only ones who misevaluated him. I mean, this guy could have gone anywhere in the country, literally at a time when USC football was about to reach one of its lowest points ever. Instead, Corey stayed at home, and he went to his local favorite dream school. He chose USC. Consensus five-star, cannot miss defensive end. He went to a powerhouse high school, Centennial. He was the number one overall defensive recruit in the country, not just California, in the country. And USC snagged him. He's what you call that five-star plus, 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 whatever. I mean, the top rating you can get is 100. I don't think I've ever seen that. He was was rated 99.41. He was up there. So I guess... Let's just say things haven't turned out the way he or anyone anticipated Corey Foreman's career at USC. I mean, and there's multiple reasons why. Um, Look, 2021, I I don't know. Do we really want to hold that against Corey Um, or against anybody who played on that team? You know, he's a freshman. And and considering the circumstances, remember, USC went 4-8. and Holton was let go that year. That was... That would have been a lot for anybody to deal with, let alone a freshman, even a highly rated one. It sounds like I'm making excuses. I'm just kind of trying to lay out the timeline here. Then, you know, he also had some injury issues he dealt with, you know, throughout 2022. Uh, Not to mention his weight, you know, being yo-yoed up and down more than it should have. And that was due to a scheme thing. He He was doing what was asked of him. So you're not, you can't hold that against him as far as, you know, why is Corey Foreman losing weight when he should have been adding weight? Uh, He was misused in um, Alex Rich's first year, you know, stand up, rush end, get to the quarterback type of guy. And then when that didn't work out, um, he was, you know, he was given to Sean Nua and, uh, you know, he just didn't develop his second year into a defensive lineman. Again, this is still Alex Grinch's system, just instead of stand up, it's now, right, put your hand on the dirt, go play your natural defensive end position. 
look, whatever happened, whatever little playing time we had in 2022, that dwindled down to essentially zero um, by the end of the year. He, he stopped suiting up. He, he redshirted. So during Foreman's second year um, and first year with Riley, um, well, so when Riley took over in 2022, this would have been Foreman's second year and his first playing under Lincoln Riley. Uh, he was asked, you know, what would it take for the, your, the number one guy to reach his potential? Here's what Lincoln Riley said. The number one thing that he's done up to this point is that he stayed on the field. He's been able to continue to practice and get better and get reps and get more comfortable what we're, what we're asking that position, the ed position, to do. The thing is, the thing we're looking for in all of our guys, including Corey, is consistency. He's good. His good is outstanding, and he's got to go out there, trust it, and play more consistent. He's certainly one of the many guys we look, we look at right now and say, what a great time for him to really break through. I feel like we have a lot of guys that have a, have done a lot of good things on, on the practice field, ready to take that next step and go earn a lot of reps on Saturday. That was said in October of 2022. So I suppose the positive for Corey was, you know, he was still part of the rotation at that time. Okay, there were, what, six, seven games into the season. But being one of USC's, finger quotes, prize defensive players, I don't think you want to be congratulated for just being part of the rotation, right? When just staying on the field is the number one thing, it, it tells me Corey is, he's starting, but he's near the back of the line on the depth chart. And it also says it has a lot to do with his effort or in coach speak, you know, being consistent. So here's what Coach Riley said at the beginning of this season, 2023. Tell me if you notice any difference. Right now, he's practicing the most consistent with the least amount of busts he's ever had. Our continued optimism with Corey is he continues to, to get better, and we see no sign of that stopping, and there's no telling where that ceiling is, which is a lot of fun. I've continued to be proud of his progress. Five practices in, and he's taken another jump in camp. So again, sounds a lot. Sounds very similar to what was said about him in in the fall of 2022. And look, there's a lot of ways to look at how it turned out for Corey. Was he misused? Yes, absolutely. No doubt about that. He should have came to USC, defensive end, put on weight, hand in the dirt, go do what you do best. Um, but he was asked to drop weight. Was he ready when he arrived at USC? Probably not. In fact, no, he wasn't. And some of that is due to his decision-making. Let's not forget, um, and this is out of his control, his senior year in high school, that was a COVID year. California, if you were a young man, you were a kid, that sucked, period. I'm, that's all I'm going to say about that. And But he made a decision. He chose to go work out, and he played some games uh, for Winter Circle, which is a... I'm going to use this term very loosely. They poor man's version of IMG Academy on the West Coast. At least that's what they envisioned themselves to be. Corey found, you know, he ended up, you know, working out there and he was playing a guys. He played some games against some guys that I might be able to compete against for one down as a place kicker. <laughs> My point is he missed his senior season and he didn't get to play for Centennial when. California finally opened up everything and said, you guys can go play a truncated, you know, what, five, six game season, whatever it turned out to be. He didn't play for his high school. So when you add everything up from when he arrived at USC and playing his two years in, in Alex Grinch's scheme, I think it's best that he probably go get a fresh start somewhere else. I mean, here's his career totals in three years at USC. 24 tackles, four and a half of those were for a loss, two and a half sacks. And that interception that I talked about at the beginning of the show. He appeared in 26 games. That's it. In three seasons. Um, and I, I get, yeah, it, part of his third year was a redshirt year, but still. He was the number one player in the country coming out of high school. So, I mean, man, 
even though you can count on one hand all the plays Foreman impacted in his time at USC, from an optics point of view, this is just another one of those, man, USC gets the four- and five-star guys, but they don't develop them. That's what it looks like from the outside. Each each case is unique. You can go back to layers like, hey, you know what? Maybe this isn't all on USC. I know every program misses, but when you look at the, the Corey Foremans, the, the Damani Jacksons, Mal- Malachi Nelson, I don't, I don't know if that one's fair. He's just finished his freshman year, but it's kind of trending that way. The Whitney Lewises, the Aaron Corps, Dylan Baxters, the George Farmers. And look, if Max Brown can say it, I'll agree. There's been a lot of really, really good talent at USC that someone overrated or they weren't developed or both. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers, you're going to get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, do it right now. There's no better time. Uh, the app is really easy to use, and you can choose a wide range of betting options. You can point the point spread, the player prop bets. You like the over-unders? They got it, and they got it much more than just that. So visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on and get in on the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on sports today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts like myself on Locked on Plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 hours a day, seven days a week streaming channel. So is this coach speak or is this keeping it real? That's That part's difficult because the old school in all of us had all the great memories of the guys that we coached and that maybe weren't ready in the beginning and they progressed and they got better and you got to see that at the end. End quote. If you're my everyday viewer or listener, you remember me reading this quote off on yesterday's episode. But for for someone who wasn't around yesterday and you're here today, thank you. Uh, that that was Lincoln Riley's quote after Monday's practice when he was asked about Malachi Nelson. That was your typical coach talking to the media, giving the right answer to the question without without you know taking it a bridge too far. Uh, but what about this quote? This was his, this was part of that quote as well. He, he said this as well after practice. You want to have guys who are hungry to get on the field right away, but also guys that have a mind to be developed and have a good sense of reality, end quote. We'll come back to that in just one second. Was that Lincoln Riley having his Pete Carroll, Mark Sanchez moment? In other words, Was that coach letting on just a little bit that he wasn't happy with Nelson's decision? Where's the analogy, Mark? What are you saying? Some people aren't as old as you are. Back when Mark Sanchez uh, held his press conference at USC to let everybody know that he was foregoing his next year of eligibility, jumping into the NFL, uh, you could tell Pete Carroll was not happy about it. And I know for a fact (laughs) that he was livid. Um, that's another story for another episode. I'll, 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 I'll tell that story soon. Uh, but Coach Riley said yesterday regarding the transfer portal, the, the transfer portal conversations in general, this is what he was talking about. It's just part of the world of college football at this current at this current time. And I think, you know, for me, and then our coaches, and then and, <clears throat> and our coaches, the one thing we talked about Talking about our players is putting our energy into the people that are here. At the end of the day, you gotta you gotta respect it. You gotta have the conversations, and then you go. And the reality is, for us, having people that are dying to be here at USC, they're dying to be USC Trojans first and foremost. So it sounds like you know Coach Riley had the conversation with Nelson, and then he said, "Hey, I gotta go spend some time with the guys that want to be here." So again, back to that quote when Lincoln Riley said, you want to have guys who are hungry 
to get on the field right away, but also guys that have a mind to be developed and a good sense of reality. Was that coach speak or is that keeping it real and getting in the last word, so to speak, as Nelson looks for another school to play quarterback for? Sorry. It, for me, it pretty much sounded like what he was saying. I don't know. It kind of sounded like he was saying certain players need to grow up and not expect something to be handed to them. I know a couple of my viewers uh, thought I was being a little harsh. Uh, regarding my thoughts on Nelson bailing on USC after his freshman year. Well, what did I say that, that Lincoln Riley didn't also say? We might have chose our words a little differently, but I think we essentially said the same thing. Go back and watch yesterday's episode. Go back when I said two freshmen can't walk around like they're the dude. When there are other older dudes there ahead of you. I, I believe that's what Coach Lally was talking about when he said having a good sense of reality. I mean, look, it's great having that hunger, that drive, but don't tell people you're the guy. Go prove it and keep quiet until your teammates call you the dude. Speaking of dude, you think Miller Moss doesn't have the respect of his teammates? He was asked about Nelson. And the other guys, you know, who have jumped into the transfer portal. Here's what Miller had to say. I love this. Quote, they have to do what they think is best for them. We play a difficult sport. I play a difficult position. It's hard to win games at this level. It has to be earned. And if you turn and run or whatever it is at the first sign of adversity, you're never going to grow as a football player and as a, and as a human being as a whole. So that's kind of been my approach. And I think in the end, I'll definitely be better for it. And I'm excited for future adversity as well. End quote. Okay. Let that sink in for a second. He was also asked about playing conservatively in the bowl game because it's just going to be him and Jake Jensen, a quarterback. Miller, typical, you know, I don't know if it's a nervous laugh or it's just one of, you know, it's just part of his personality, but he just laughed it off. And said, I'm going to play and do whatever it takes to win the game. You, you can't play football timid. You know, he used the same words I used yesterday. Football's a violent sport. It's a collision sport. So I know that any Trojan fan that just heard him say that said, you know what? That's my dude. That Moss is quarterback one for USC. I really do. I hope that he balls out against the Louisville Cardinals. I know he'll be at USC for spring camp. He said so. Uh, the question is, will the competitor competitor in him uh, keep him at USC past spring camp? If you're betting on that happening or not happening, um, I'd bet on Miller Moss being at USC. Uh, again, you listen to how he described the players jumping into the transfer portal. And that was Miller talking very poignantly. And he even said, this is a difficult position. So maybe it was, maybe it wasn't directed at Malachi Nelson, but he was definitely keeping it real. There was no coach speak. He wasn't mincing words. Um, I loved it. And that's another, again, that's another reason why I'm a huge Miller Moss fan. I've watched the young man play in high school. I watched him come up through USC. He doesn't let things affect him. He just goes out there and he works and he works and he works and he looks for more work. Remember, he's already graduated. I'm not kidding. <laughs> he he can literally be working on his PhD before he leaves USC as a football player. Playing. He's going to have his master's, I think, sooner rather than later. Everybody needs to start rooting for this guy. And I get it. Lincoln Riley's going to be bringing a quarterback in through the transfer portal. He has to. But again, I don't think Miller Moss is going to leave. Things can change really quickly. I mean, there could be an NIL deal out there that can say, hey, you are going to be a starter if you come play for me. And you can get all this as well. His mom taught at USC. Miller is a, he was born to be a trophy. I want to see him get a fair opportunity. And now with Caleb gone, this is the perfect chance for him. Like I said on yesterday's episode, 
go seize the opportunity. When you're hiring for a small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire someone from. Hiring is easy when you have that many qualified candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses, you guys wear a lot of hats and that you really don't have a whole lot of time or resources to hire. Thankfully, LinkedIn has made the process intuitive, quick, and easy. They even launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, and that's going to make the process even easier and much quicker. Post your job for free at linkedin.com forward slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com forward slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. On yesterday's info packed show, uh, I mentioned how Chris Thompson Jr., linebacker, uh, he's in the transfer portal, but he's gonna he's still gonna play in the Holiday Bowl for USC. You gotta love that kind of attitude. What's his incentive? Putting a little bit. Okay, yes, he has a big incentive. He can put more uh, more of himself on game film, playing linebacker. Uh, to send out to schools that might be interested in them. Remember, Taka Curtis, transfer portal. I love that attitude. I really love that type of team first mentality. But maybe, you know what? Maybe Chris Thompson ends up staying. I don't know. But um, I what I do know is we found out that Taj Washington is going to be suited up and ready to play in the holiday uh, holiday bowl as well. He's not in the transfer portal. But he's going to the NFL after he plays in the uh, East-West Shrine All-Star game. He has no incentive to play in this game. He doesn't need to put anything else on film. But this is why he was one of my favorite guys uh, while he was on USC's roster. While he is on USC's roster. Still is. Uh, look, if I were him, I, I get it. Wanting to play in the, in the Holiday Bowl, helping his teammates out. And it's because they're shorthanded. It's definitely why he's doing this. But I would have a couple of caveats if I was if I was Taj. Like, number one, coach, I'm not running any crossing patterns that uh, that are going to set me up for any type of Kevin Ellison meets Deshaun Jackson type of impact. You know what I'm talking about, USC fans. If I'm Taj, I'm not running that pattern. Not in that game. Not in the Holiday Bowl. There's no reason for it. Um, and I'm also saying, you know what? I'm done by the third quarter, regardless of the score. That last part is probably negotiable because of the competitor um, is always going to want to take over when duty calls. And that's who Taj is. So that begs the question. In fact, I was asked this question on Inside the Trojan Huddle. That's where I am. Once a week, wersc.com. It's that four-person panel show. When you're done making Locked on USC, your first listen, go check it out. Really fun episode this week. Anyways, uh, we were asked the question, do players get play, uh, paid to pay in bowl games? My quick initial reaction thought was, yes. I mean, why not, right? They already received those swag bags that the sponsors uh, put up. You play, you don't play, you get a, you get a, a goodie bag. And the, the better the bowl game, the better the swag bag. <laughs> um, and Look, we know because we've seen it happen that that stuff ends up being sold on eBay or on Amazon or Etsy or whatever, so they can take the money and put it in their pockets. I mean, how many guys have we seen? How many times have we seen guys selling their jersey or their rings or, or helmets or other gear online? It happens all the time. So let's just have these bowl games start their own collectives. Maybe that's a way to keep players interested in staying through the bowl season. Um, I, look, I don't know if it's going to move the needle for a guy like, like Caleb Williams or Taj Washington. Um, 
I don't know. Does does an extra thousand dollars? I'm just throwing numbers out. Does an extra thousand dollars or two thousand dollars at the end of the year keep guys from jumping into the transfer portal before they get their gift card from Chick Fil A or Best Buy or who? Like I said, whomever the sponsor is. I don't know. Maybe. All I know is USC is running a pretty skeleton crew at practice right now. And I'm not sure they can afford too many other players ducking out before uh, you, you start putting the other guys at risk uh, because they can't field enough players to play a game. Now, a little bit of hyperbole there. Point being, uh, from what I understand, it's starting to feel or look like that USC roster that went to Notre Dame. Uh, when, did the, when did the sanctions fully kick in under Lane Kiffin? What was that 2010? Was um, you go out there on the odd years. So uh, 2011, when George Katrib was uh, the deep threat, I think USC had like 45 scholarship uh, players make that trip. It was just a weird, weird situation. USC isn't at that point yet, but getting close. So. I say, yeah, you know what? Let's find a way to keep players interested, keep players around to play in the bowl game before they decide they're going to jump in the transfer portal. You know, everybody says pay the players. Well, reward them at the end of the year, right? Do you agree? Do you disagree? You know where the comment section is. Let me know your thoughts on the matter. And uh, you know what? I think at the end of the week, I'm going to do another viewer email, viewer comment uh, section. So send them on in, folks. There's a lot. Look, I throw a lot of content out there. It's just not a reaction to, oh, my God, somebody's in the transfer portal. I want to give you some things to think about. You know, this is, this is a smart person's show. This isn't, ooh, what's happening on Twitter? Let me go find out. No, 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 no. I want to give you some unique perspective. So tell me what you think. Hit the viewer comment section. And uh, end of the week, not only will you have a Friday rant, but I'll make one of the segments dedicated to you, the viewer, the listener. And uh, I'll pick out some of those, some unique things, some, some things that caught my eye from what you have to say. So how's that? So until that next episode of Locked on USC, which will be coming at you tomorrow, everyone, you know what to do.